Hello and welcome to TOC Extra. I'm your host, Azrael Knight, and today we are going to learn all about DX coding. DX stands for Digital Index and was originally introduced by Kodak in 1983. DX coding is a full system, which includes a barcode on the film's edge, a code on the cartridge, and a barcode read by the photo finishing machines. The camera auto sensing, or CAS code, is what most people are familiar with. The camera reads the CAS code on the side of the cartridge through conductive and non-conductive squares that are silver and black respectively. There are two rows of six squares with the first square in each row dedicated to the ground. The first row is dedicated to film speed with 32 possibilities. The second row is broken into two sections, the first for film length and the second for exposure tolerance. In June 1983, Arthur Goldsmith wrote an editorial in popular photography before the release but after the announcement. Kodak is making the DX system available for free to all in hopes it will establish itself as a universal system, says Goldsmith. He would talk with several leading film companies at the Photo Marketing Association trade show. Agfa, Ilford, and Pentax showed interest in adopting the system. Not surprisingly, the response from Fuji so far has been more equivocal, remarks Goldsmith. Having developed their own magnetic coating to set ISO for their 100 and 400 films, they are reluctant to cast themselves into the role of following Kodak, even though the DX system provides a wider range of benefits. Minoru Unishi, president at Fuji Photo Film, said in an interview, We haven't yet decided. For the time being, we will continue doing what we are doing. Ansco claimed they would have a DX-ready camera in just a few months, while Canon had a more reserved approach, stating it won't work unless everyone adopts it. Minolta's chief of R&D was quoted as saying, I believe the DX system is technically acceptable and will be attractive to consumers. As planned by Kodak, the first film to use DX coding was their Kodacolor VR1000 in August 1983 and the other VR films, the 100, 200, and 400, a few months later. That was not the only thing Kodacolor VR was the first at, and if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link at the end cards. So a year later, Goldsmith reported back from the 1984 PMA and no DX-ready cameras were shown. Though much of Kodak's film had converted, and Agfa had started with Agfa Color 200. Ansco was supposed to be the first camera to utilize the CAS codes, telling Goldsmith in 1983 that it was mere months away, but they backed out due to concerns about customer convenience. Despite these hiccups, it was already announced that the first models would be shown at Photokina later that year. Minolta was already quoted as saying, In 1985, all new Minolta cameras, compact and SLR alike, will be provided with sensors to utilize the advantages of DX coding. Little did the public know that Minolta would surprise everyone with the world's first auto-focusing SLR as well. Even though the codes on all these films weren't being utilized in cameras at the time, they were ensuring proper development in the lab, as stated by Popular Science in October that year. Right now, its main use is to ensure accurate sorting in the processing labs and optimum processing. It's also stated here that Pentax was the first to adopt the system into their cameras. It's actually under much debate which camera was the first to use the DX coding system, the Pentax SuperSport 35 or the Minolta AF-E Freedom. Not everyone can agree which SLR was the first either, the Konica TCX or the Pentax A3 and A3000. Once the ball got rolling though, DX coding was adopted throughout the industry, and while it seemed foolproof at first, it isn't without its faults, and not everyone was happy. Specifically, I'm talking about bulk loaders. Some of the cameras being released in the mid to late 80s required DX coded film. In this 1990 article, one camera store has come up with a solution to sell reusable cartridges with the film speed already on the side. It's also worth noting that even though the CAS code did several things, most cameras only utilized the film speed. Still, you'd be hard pressed to find a roll of film without DX codes these days, 
That includes Fuji. Historically, Kodak hasn't always made the best decisions, but this was one of the good ones. If you'd like to know more about DX coding, I'll provide some links in the description. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. With Patreon, you'll enjoy things like early access, limited edition postcards, and your name in the credits. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. Bye.